Hey, everybody. Hey, so I want to try this new concept. Um, in the past, if something ever popped into my head or if I had an opinion on something, I'd write a post or a blog post and or an article, whatever. But now I want to try this. I want to try this. And I hope that you like the Total Hockey Training Podcast. We're actually at about 28 or 29 episodes with 21 or 22 released. And so if you like the show, please share it. And if you'd like, if you'd like to see any specific guests on the show, please reach out. Please let me know. And uh, again, thanks for listening to the Total Hockey Training Podcast. It's growing, and that's pretty cool. And I appreciate all of you who listen and watch. So listen, I want to try this new concept here. I want to talk about the NHL Scouting Combine. And I want to talk about it because, one, I think I've been to 20 of them. And two, it's just around the corner here. And I remember going to them back when I first started working in the NHL. It was at a hotel up by the Toronto airport. It was in the, the ballroom of one of the hotels up there. And it was kind of smaller back then. You know, you had maybe a strength coach or an athletic trainer from every team up there. Not all the teams were represented in terms of watching the physical testing, but every team's amateur scouts were there because in addition to the physical testing that they do, they, the prospects do, they also have meetings. So I want to talk about it as it is coming up, like I said, and people ask me all the time, like, do I see value in it? And yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do from a strength and conditioning coach's perspective. And for amateur scouts, it's a very important part of the scouting process. And for the strength and conditioning coach, you know, you are watching kids who are 18 years old, and it's a tough situation because you have 120 of the best players for that year in one place conducting these physical tests. And when I used to go to them, I used to sit there and watch the, the jumps, the vertical jumps and the broad jumps, because I wanted to see their ability to skate in current day of the NHL. And if I was still going, I'd still watch that. And there are several tests that others may watch. That's only what I watch. Others may have watched other things that they thought could provide value to them in helping talking to their amateur scouts about what they see in the testing process. But they're still 18 years old. You, you don't have a crystal ball. You don't have the ability to look into the future to see where a prospect may or may not be. So I liked, I used to love going and watching that stuff. I, you know, as in terms of this year, I think we all know that Max Macklin's going to be number one. Like does Mac have to go and perform the test? I, he doesn't No, but probably no, knowing Mac, he probably will. Cause I remember watching McDavid do his test a few years back and I think everyone knew he was going to be number one, but he still went and, and, and did the test. I thought that was pretty cool. I actually remember him tripping and falling during the 5-10-5, and he got right up and tried to finish the test. I, I respected that. So um, just about the physical testing process, you go there with an open eye, you don't know what you're going to see, and you, you make your notes on what you do see, and you try to collaborate with your amateur scouts about where they could see this player being especially if that specific team has the specific the specific team that you're working for has interest in that specific player I think you have to be prepared to have that conversation for all the players that are there now from the amateur scout perspective this is a big deal to them because they've busted their ass the whole year from whatever August of 2023 until now watching players, watching players over and over and over again, compiling lists, having meetings with their management. And it's a big deal to them because of the, the meetings that take place. They, I think it's 20 minutes a team could sit down with a player individually and talk to them. And I think that's great because they get to know them. You, you, you don't get to know 
the the player you see on the ice playing throughout all the the year without having a conversation with them. So I think that's very beneficial. And yeah, I think the combine is is great. And I think it does allow teams to to have a a, a better layer on top of what they see of these kids as players. So I think that's very beneficial. And also I just want to mention that, you know, amateur scouts, they hold their cards close to their vest in terms of ranking their players or their draft lists. And I just want to mention that because I, I talked about it before, you know, a lot of amateur scouts don't even know who some of these people are that are out there talking about their first round predictions, second round predictions, whatever. And I think that's imperative because NHL teams, 32 of them now, they're not going out and talking to some of these writers or these YouTubers about where they see specific players. Now, a guy like Bob McKenzie from TSN, yeah, he does have some, quote, connections. But for the most part, you know, you, you got to, you got to, you can't believe what you, with your, you can't believe what you read and what you see it's these teams are doing their homework they have their own lists and that's how it goes and so i just want to mention that um if any kids are watching this going to the combine good luck i know one of them very close to me is going so i want to wish him the best of luck and i know he's going to do well on the testing part so anyways i hope that helps um i just wanted to kind of talk about the nhl scouting combine if you have any other areas you'd like me to offer my opinion on, please don't hesitate to shoot me a, a DM or a, an email or something, and I'd love to talk about something. And, and that goes for guests, too, on the podcast. If you have any podcasts, you, every guest you'd like to see me have on the podcast, please let me know. But I uh, hope you like this format, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks a lot.